so today's video is on color theory notes and how to use color theory in you guys' classrooms or uh, for my students out there so that you guys can get some more in-depth help into primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. And uh, one of the videos I shot a while back, so hopefully you guys enjoy. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave some comments down below. I always like to hear from my class and see what you guys think. Morning, 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 afternoon, or, you know, whenever we hit play on this thing. Uh, today, color theory. Color theory. All right, so color theory, all about the usage of how colors interact with one another and how we see them in our world. All right, so copy the following onto your paper. Color theory. Copy the following onto your paper. We're going to draw one big X. And we're going to put a horizontal line through the middle of it, just like so. So now we have six equal sections. Now in that six equal sections, we're going to fill in some colors. All right, let's start off with our primary colors. Our primaries are going to go, we're putting these P's. P stands for primary, self-explanatory, I think. For the three primary colors, we're going to be using the following, yellow, red, and blue. So you're going to take each of one of the colors, lay it down into the triangle to fill up that space. Doesn't need to be exactly perfect just as long as you have clear definitive definition within each section so it's easy to see, understand, looks good. Ain't worth doing if you can't do it right. Last one, yellow. Cool. Now, three primaries out of the way. Set those to the side. Then we have our secondary colors. So if we did P here, guess what we're going to do here? S, S, S. Now, just in case, let's go ahead and make a key for ourselves. P and S alright for primary secondary cool alright for our secondary colors if these three primary colors are the ones that are found in nature. These ones exist all around us in various shapes and forms. However, the secondary colors have to be created by combining two of these colors. Okay, now we take our two colors. We have our primary, primary colors. We combine the two colors to create a new color. And the color will be orange for this section. So yellow plus red equals orange. So we'll color that section in. And we're going to repeat this for the next three sections, or the next two sections, I should say. Notice how I'm coloring in nice and dark, rich colors, trying to trying to wipe out all those little white specks, because that's a bad thing. We don't want to see those on our paper. All right, next section. We got a little bit of red, got a little bit of blue. Mix them together, we get a little bit of purple. And for those of you aficionados out there that call this violet, I'm a man. I say purple. I don't say violet. So, nice, rich, purple hue covering that space. All right, last one there. Got a little bit of yellow, got a little bit of blue. Mix them together, you get green. This is all that basic stuff they should have taught you in elementary school in case they didn't. Learning it right now. All right. Now, those three sections, six sections are done. All right, let's go over a little bit of housekeeping. For many of you, this is the first time that you've got to use color within my class. For some of you, you already know my routines. Now, the crown is the one thing in my room that may break because if it breaks, it still works. However, I have to tell that story to tell another story. Several years back, I had a group of kids in class. One of them raised their hand, Mr. G. Yo. Um... My crown broke. 
Okay, and no, 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 my crown ain't working. Okay, um, did you peel the paper off the outside of it? Oh, hey, now it's working. Never mind, we're good. Okay, once we got this stuff taken care of, let's go on to the next bit of assignments. All right, for many of you, we're still dealing with some basic shape illustration. And we talked about a few things the other day during our notes. Now for our notes, we had three big terms. We had shade, we had tint, and we had tone. Now for shade, shade is by adding black to your colors to create a darker tone, or darker hue, I should say. I shouldn't mix those two up. So let's take a little bit of red, and I'm going to mix this down my paper. Then I'm going to take a little bit of black, I'm going to lace that over there. And then as it gets over towards the other end, I'm going to make it a little darker. Now, by adding black to this, we've created another color. What I'm doing is I'm going to take my finger. The nice thing about Crayola crayons are made of wax. So as I smear those colors together, you have that perfect shade that we're looking for. Going from that light, rich red color to a faded into a darker uh, black, black infused reddish tone. So it gives you that proper shade effect. Next. Take a little bit of blue. And we're going to add to this one, we're going to be adding a little bit of white. And by adding the white, we're going to get a lighter tint. So I'm going to color over the top of this with the white. Now, I know for many of you, it's hard to see. I'll just do a little bit of blue right here so we have a base color because I colored white all the way through. Smear those together. And you can see how it's lighter over here and darker over here where we haven't added any white. Last but not least, we have our tone. Now, if we added black to the shade and we added white to the tint for the tone, we're going to add gray. Now, for this one, to get gray added to this, we're going to use a pencil to color over our color somewhat. So throw down a streak of orange like so and I'm going to start off with hatching lines on one end progressively get them darker as I'm transferring through the medium so this time I'm going to smear again just use my hand to heat up that wax to smear it out and across so now we're going from the light orange on one side, adding the grays into it to get that richer, darker tone that we're looking for. Now, once you've completed an example for each, I want to see at least three variations. Of each shade, so three examples incomplete of your shades, three examples of tint, and three examples of tone. Now I recommend using different colors just to mix, mix it up and make it a little easier for you. But give me three of each, so in total you should have nine different blocks. And then we're gonna move on to tertiary. All right, for tertiary. For tertiary colors, these are the colors that are in between a secondary and a primary color. On tw it's a 12 part color wheel when it comes to that. So on everybody's paper, go ahead and write the three primary colors in doubles. So yellow, yellow, whoops, and then red, red, and then blue, blue. All right, now, For our yellows, now on either side of the color wheel for the yellow, you have orange and green. So on one of these, one will be orange, 
The other one will be green. For the red, we have red, and then we have orange and purple. So one will be orange, the other will be purple. The last one, blue, purple, green. All right, now, you're gonna draw a box for each one of these. side we're going to color in our primary colors on the opposite side we're going to color it in with our secondary colors now I'm going to repeat this for just the first one just so you see what we have to do after that you can do this on your own Because I'm making a tertiary color, I'm in the middle here, I'm going to be creating a new color. So the best way to think about this is, on one side, you have 100% yellow. In the middle, you're going to have 50% yellow, and on the other end, we're going to have 0% yellow. So as I'm going through, I'm getting a gradation. So, I'm going to take my yellow, finish coloring it through. Now I'm going to get to this side, don't have any yellow, that's why I stopped there. Now, for the orange, doing the same thing, but it's going to be in reverse. Full orange on the left, on the right side over here, and as it's going across, blending, blending, so it should have about 50% there, blending, blending to nothing. So now I have a gradation, like our value scale, but I've done it with a color. So, same thing for the next one. You're going to go ahead and repeat this for all six. Make sure they are properly labeled with primary color first. Because it's primary language, then secondary language. Go ahead and finish this up, and I'll meet you in a second. Alright, now, once you've gotten yours completed, make sure that you have proper blending in each of those. I definitely want to see a proper blend going from that primary color into the secondary color, so you have a clean tertiary color in the middle. Um, now, once you've gotten this done, on a separate sheet of paper down here, I want you to do a two-part design. On one side of it, you're going to draw your three basic shapes. Go ahead and turn them into three-dimensional form. On the other side, you can do the same design that we did in class the other day, where we did the popcorn bowl with The soda and I think we had the remote in here too TV in the background and a little table that side everything on it okay now Taking these two designs with your sheet of paper, if you want to do one on the front, one on the back, that'd probably be better just because it'll make things easier to, for you to see. But once you've gotten those two designs drawn out, go ahead and add your colors. But I want to see, here's what I'm looking for. On your basic shapes, I'm looking for proper color with shading, as we did before. Now remember, your shadows must mimic your objects that they're working off of. So, for the square that we've changed into a cube, we have a square shadow coming off of it. For the circle, circular sh uh, shadow coming off of it. For the pyramid, the pyramid is up higher than the cube. So down here on this base, we've got a little bit of that shadow coming off right here. And for your TV, 
So, as we had up on the illustration, we had Coke. So this is red. Shadows that, that would come off of it, we're, we would add a little bit of black onto it for our shadow. And then have the shadow coming down and away from it. Now, hang on. Now we're getting into light. Now, if light's coming off of this, what color is the can? Oh, yeah, it's red. So we're going to add a little bit of red into our shadow down here because it's reflected light. Co complete this for the finished assignment. Do at the end of class. Later. Hey class, I hope that you liked that last video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down there at the bottom. Now I'm going to get back to uh, doing my thing, which is uh, work on my own stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow me on the web. I got a bunch of places you can find me, such as Pinterest. Or t no, not, not, we're not doing Tumblr. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, GroupMe. That's a new one for me. And Steam. Uh, and my personal favorite, YouTube. Check me out. Like and subscribe. See you guys later. Next class. Follow. See you later. Next class. Do your homework. <laughs>